the video game news uh, this week, but we're going to talk about the Fortnite news first. So if you're not interested in the Fortnite news, just skip ahead to the rest of the gaming news. But for everyone that is interested in the Fortnite news, uh, wow, we have some serious uh, Fortnite news this week. Uh, seems like Fortnite is in a lot of drama and controversy right now after the most recent update. So let's talk about it. Okay, so first, let's start with some positive Fortnite news. Uh, a collab with the super world-famous uh, Formula One racer Lewis Hamilton uh, has been basically announced for Fortnite. So there's like a Fortnite Lewis Hamilton collab that is happening. So if you don't know who Lewis Hamilton is, a um, huge, huge, absolutely huge fan base worldwide. If you ever watched Formula One racing, you probably heard of him. And if not, uh, you might have heard of him in so many of the brand deals that he's part of. So Lewis Hamilton is pretty awesome. And uh, fun fact, one of my favorite flavors of monster energy, like the drink, is the Lewis Hamilton flavor of Monster Energy, and sadly, it's like the hardest uh, to find near where I am right now, so <laughs> sometimes I actually have to, like, order it online, but yeah, Lewis Hamilton is awesome, and basically gonna get a collab with Fortnite for, I believe, two different skins, so that's awesome. Uh, this is very similar to what Fortnite does with other big superstars, you know, uh, the Kid Leroy got two different skins. The Travis Scott collab got two different skins. Uh, LeBron James also got two different skins in Fortnite. So it seems like a lot of big, you know, famous athletes or celebrities usually end up getting two different Fortnite skins. So that's what they're doing with Lewis Hamilton. And uh, yeah, fans are very happy about this. Fortnite put out a trailer and everything for that. Uh, next, let's talk about the Fortnite update. So, uh, this week, um, Fortnite released the highly anticipated update. Uh, it's the Season 7 Fortnite update, and it basically changed an area of the Fortnite map in the bottom, like, left corner of the map. Uh, the snow area is finally there, so... An OG location has returned, uh, Frosty Flights, and airplanes are back as well as a bunch of other weapons. Uh, the Quad Launcher is back, which is basically like a quad rocket launcher. Uh, it's amazing. It, it just does a little bit less damage, but you can spam it pretty fast. Uh, the Tactical SMG is back, and a bunch of other things like the balloons and stuff like that are back on the map. So, people are really enjoying the new update that came out. They were, you know, looking forward to this, myself included. Um, and there were some other changes on the map. Uh, some locations did not return. Uh, Polar Peak, which was like the huge kind of castle in the snow area, is not back. Uh, I guess they're not bringing that back. Uh, certain pirate locations have appeared on the map, but we don't have, you know, Lazy Lagoon or Sunny Steps or the Volcano. So this season is starting to look very strange and different compared to the actual OG Fortnite map. So people are starting to say that this really is an alternate timeline map, and we don't know what's going to happen. So, uh, it's interesting, it's interesting. Uh, but, so far, people are enjoying the update. But, there is a feature that got put into the game after the new Fortnite update, and, uh, a lot of people are not happy about this. So, uh, let's go. Here, here's all the news. Here's everything updated to literally today when I'm uploading this. So, if any other news comes out, this is what we know. So, uh, it, it's no secret that Fortnite has been, uh, sued in the last year, in two years, and three years. Uh, a lot of companies, a lot of, like, uh, parent groups and things have sued Fortnite. Um, 
the recent lawsuit that Fortnite had was because they did not have a way to refund accidental credit card uh, purchases from the item shop. Uh, previously, there was nothing. Then they added like a, a three chance system where you can return an item three times and after that was up, you couldn't return things anymore. Well, apparently, for uh, underage people, that is absolutely illegal, and Fortnite was not allowed to actually put that in the game. So they got sued by a, like, uh, organization that looks over, you know, consumer rights, and, uh, yeah, Fortnite had to pay out a huge amount of money. And uh, if you live in the U.S., you are actually able to go in and claim some money if you accidentally purchase some Fortnite items. I think you have to give proof of the items that you purchase, but you can actually get some of your money back. So Fortnite in the last year especially has started putting a lot of attention to uh, content on their creative maps and just general content from their creators and streamers and things like that. They're trying to be more family friendly. And it seems like this new update, Fortnite is really trying to uh, appeal to everybody, especially with the popularity of games like Roblox and Minecraft. It seems like Fortnite is really trying to push creative, and they're trying to make safe, creative experiences for all ages that don't involve, you know, maybe uh, violent themes or scary themes, you know, something that might scare somebody that's very, very young. So this new update basically changed a lot of aspects uh, regarding Fortnite cosmetic items. So as of right now in Fortnite, there are parental controls and parental controls have been in Fortnite since basically, I think the start of like chapter two, maybe they were there before, I have no idea. But basically parents could restrict like the amount of time uh, their kids would play Fortnite. Uh, I think there was something which would basically restrict uh, voice chatting or things like that, or adding friends, so people could not add friends or invite people if they were on a parental restricted account. And that was okay, you know, Fortnite did a few things here and there. This new update, though, makes it so people with parental restrictions on their account cannot use certain skins in certain battle royale modes or creative maps depending what the age rating for those maps is so let's say i'm just throwing a fictional scenario out there let's say let's say they decide to do like i don't know uh <laughs> Let's say, they decide, let's say Disney decides to do a Frozen Elsa collab in Fortnite. They, they decide to build, you know, Elsa's palace from Frozen in the Fortnite creative map. It's an official Disney experience. Well, Disney right now can actually restrict within Fortnite's like servers and everything what emotes, what backblings, and what skins they're going to allow in this experience. So let's say they make the experience like rated E for everyone. Well, that means that certain skins with like knives or guns in the back bling or on the actual skin will not be able to be used on that map. Additionally, Fortnite is also making these changes to other things like emotes. So apparently there are a number of emotes which would not be allowed in these experiences as well, so anything that's maybe slightly creepy, slightly like suggestive, emotes like that, uh, a lot of like the icon ones with like lyrics, not allowed. And uh, after this update came out and all these changes came out, the Fortnite community went absolutely crazy on TikTok, on Twitter, on Instagram. I was seeing so many memes. Uh, people were putting like, you know, uh, <laughs> Just like really like uh, funny music and sound effects over like Fortnite emotes or memes just about the whole situation. So people were straight up trolling Epic Games about this and let's just say the Fortnite community was not happy. And apparently like three hours after the update came out, uh, Epic Games put 
out like a statement and then a bunch of other creators came out with like additional info um and honestly the way fortnite updated the this information for everyone everyone was um i i want to say they did a pretty good job like they clarified a lot of things so basically um uh, what they said is all fortnite skins will always like be playable in battle royale so like no matter what skin you buy you know michael myers or uh chun li or anything like that travis scott you'll always be able to use those skins you know in battle royale in team rumble in um zero build in ranked all those skins will still be allowed there's not they're not taking the skins out of your locker you're still going to be able to play those skins in the main version of fortnite so there's no problem there basically if you wear a skin that has uh you know guns or knives or ammo on it they might restrict those skins on certain creative maps that have been set to a e for everyone age rating and that's going to be like 10 percent lower than 10 percent some people said like five or seven percent of the creative maps are like e for everyone so basically unless you play a lot of creative you're never really gonna have a problem with this uh it seems like every fortnite mode is gonna be exactly the same as it always was so that's very very nice to know but here's where it gets kind of better fortnite also said that if by accident you wear a skin that's maybe banned or restricted on a creative map that's e for everyone you will become a default skin so you won't have an actual skin in that game you'll just be a default but they said that in the next year so in the next few months they are going to be going into the fortnite locker for every single one of these skins and they're going to be editing them so if you wear uh let me let me get an example let's see let's say you want to wear the john wick uh back bling with the guns the the backpack or the the bag with like all the weapons in it let's say you want to wear that back bling into a creative match what they're gonna do is they're going to make a version of that back bling that's maybe just a bag and you can't see the guns and then that version will be allowed and will appear when you play on in e for everyone uh creative map so they're going to be making like slightly altered versions of all the skins so you'll still be able to be john wick uh or any of the other fortnite skins no matter what map you play on it's just going to be a slightly different version so honestly that's not too bad i kind of like that and uh it seemed like after they said all this the fortnite community kind of uh calmed down after this so uh right now uh, so far from what i'm seeing most people are kind of okay with it but i'm curious let me know in the comments what you think about all of this fortnite news uh do you think epic games is okay with trying to make you know their game a little bit safer and appeal to more people because uh, personally I think it's good you know I, a fortnite wants to become a game that everybody can play so i think it's kind of nice because now there's like a way for like you know anyone that has like younger siblings they can hop on fortnite maybe play a creative map that's you know nothing crazy or violent or anything like that so and after all of this news we got a rumor and a lot of people are saying that this rumor is the reason why fortnite made the changes so there is a big rumor circulating that next season the season we get after this og one fortnite is going to do a huge collab with lego and for those that don't know lego is a huge toy brand and they usually like to keep their stuff pretty pg uh there are you know legos with guns there's star wars and stuff like that indiana jones but lego they usually try to make they, they actually have like age ratings on a lot of their lego sets and they usually try to appeal to everybody 
So I think that Fortnite and Lego might have something to do with this update change. Like maybe they're trying to make a special version of the Fortnite map that'll be, you know, accessible for everybody. And they don't want it to be just for, you know, ages like uh, 13 and up or teenagers and up or something like that. So it's interesting. Uh, honestly, I have no idea what they're going to do. But, uh, yeah, that's what a lot of people thought it was behind this change. So, yeah, let me know in the comments, and let's get on with the rest of the video game news. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, so, this, this is interesting. We got the, I want to say, nominees for the game of the year. Now, this is kind of huge, for those that don't know. Uh, the game of the year is usually voted on by different websites and there's different awards but the game awards version of the game of the year is the one that a lot of gamers and just people in the games industry uh focus on the most i would say so these are the game of the year nominees for 2023 according to the game awards that will happen later uh, i think early next month so we can vote on alan wake 2 Baldur's Gate 3, Marvel's Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So, all six of those games are nominated for Game of the Year, and uh, I don't know what game is going to win. I know all these games received amazing reviews. Honestly, that's this is going to be crazy to see what actually wins from this category, you know, of best game of the year. But there's also additional categories, you know, they have uh, best music, best game direction. Uh, let me just randomly choose one. Let's see. I wonder what best multiplayer game is. Let's see. Best multiplayer game. What do they have here? Can we actually see? Or it doesn't want to show us. Can it actually? No, it doesn't. Okay, the site the site is legit broken. <laughs> uh, okay, too bad. Too bad. We can't really see what else is nominated. But at least we got to know what the Game of the Year nominees are. So let me know in the comments what you think is going to win Game of the Year this year at the Game Awards. And if you have a game that is not listed there, let me know in the comments what game you would choose. Uh, what else do we got here? Um, so, the worst kept secret right now is that The Last of Us 2 is getting basically a remastered version for PS5. So, Last of Us 2 came out on the PlayStation 4, did fantastic, uh, it sold extremely well, was considered to be one of the best games of that year when it released, and for the longest time, people have been asking, hey, is there going to be a PS5 port? And they haven't really responded to any of this. Well, recently people have noticed in the back-end files of PlayStation Network that there are names for The Last of Us 2 in, like, the files there on the server for the PlayStation 5. So people are predicting that maybe at the Game Awards there's going to be an announcement and a trailer for a Last of Us 2 PlayStation 5 version. Uh, you know, maybe it's going to have better graphics, a higher frame rate, but honestly, The Last of Us 2 already looked amazing on the PS4, so I'm not really sure how great they can make it look on PS5. I assume it's just going to look a little better, maybe run a little bit better. But uh, yeah, it looks like that's going to get announced. Uh, let's see, um, so we got some interesting Xbox news, so more rumors have appeared again of Xbox maybe buying out another video game company, and uh, this time it's Sega, so uh, rumors came out that Xbox was potentially interested in buying Sega, uh, Sega for those that don't know, owns a lot of video game franchises like Sonic the Hedgehog, Persona, Yakuza, and a lot of other games. Well, uh, an executive there at Sega came out to say that they are honored uh, by, you know, people 
wanting to buy their company, but they said that uh, they have a lot of offers from a lot of different companies, and they don't really see them being bought out by anyone. So <laughs> it's kind of like a nice way to say, like, oh, we are very happy that you would consider buying us. A lot of people would like to buy us, but yeah, no thanks. <laughs> So, uh, some people don't want, uh, Xbox to buy Sega, and honestly, I think I'm, I'm, I'm there, like, I'm definitely on team, please don't buy Sega. <laughs> I like Sega to, to be on their own, to do their own thing, you know, uh, especially because I don't want any of their games to get, you know, changed or things like that, so, I don't know, let me know in the comments what you, what you think of, uh, Xbox potentially buying another video game company. Uh, what else do we got here? We have some other news. Looks like Persona 6, the next big Persona game by Atlas, uh, is potentially going to be releasing in 2025. So, this is interesting. Uh, there, it, it's basically a rumor that the internal team is working on the next Persona game right now, and they are really looking to release the game in 2025, so in about a year, a year and a half from now. And I'm very excited. I love the Persona games, and uh, I can't wait for the next one. Uh, I had so much fun playing Persona 5. I even played the demo on the channel, I think. But sadly, uh, my capture card could not actually capture the footage. So it was like a very uh, terrible video. <laughs> where it was like a, I think it was like a a still screen for like the entire video or something. It was so sad, but it was still relaxing. Um, let's see. We got one final piece of news here regarding Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. So it looks like the Call of Duty community is extremely divided by Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Uh, I have friends on both sides, I have friends, honestly, I've not played the new Call of Duty, so I can't say anything about it, you know, I don't try to talk about things that I didn't actually play, but I have friends that played it, and they're saying that they're having a lot of fun with the multiplayer, and then I also have friends that said it was terrible, they hated the campaign, they thought it was super lazy, and they don't like some things about the multiplayer, and, and I, I didn't ask why. It seems that online, the game has gotten really bad reviews, mixed reviews from a lot of different websites. Uh, a lot for Call of Duty, it has gotten a lot of bad reviews. I was just looking online this past week, and so many, so many companies have been given the game like 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10, and the complaint has always been like, very bad campaign, uh, lazy writing for the campaign story, broken uh, aspects for the multiplayer, and just a lot of complaints. So, yeah, it, it seems like some people were really let down by Call of Duty this year. But then on the other side, you have people saying that, you know, it's the best, most fun Call of Duty ever. Uh, the movement is really good, is what I'm hearing from some people. They said that they fixed a lot of stuff with, like, the matchmaking and the shooting and how leveling up works. And apparently some of the maps are really, really fun. So, honestly, I don't know who to believe. But I think it's best to always, you know, play the game and then decide for yourself instead of listening always to, you know, reviews or things like that. But... I'm, I, I wonder what Activision thinks right now, because usually Call of Duty has only positive things said about it every year when it comes out, so this year is kind of different, so I wonder if this is going to cause maybe some changes there in how they approach the next game for the next year. But uh, yeah, there seems to be a lot of negativity surrounding the latest Call of Duty. And that's pretty much it for the video game news this week. Uh, thank you all for listening, for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. So long.